Welcome to Europe PCR 2023. So my name is Didier Cheche, and I have the great privilege today to uh, discuss with uh, Raj Makar uh, from uh, Cedar Sina in, in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, so Raj, uh, bicuspid artery valve is a really burning uh, topic uh, when we go to the meetings and uh, on a daily basis, that's a challenge in terms of uh, diagnosing these patients and treating these patients. So uh, it's, uh, it's a real honor for me to, to have this conversation with you uh, once again. So uh, the first thing I would like to uh, understand from your uh, point of view is uh, what is the prevalence of bicuspid uh, phenotype in the patients that we are treating? Well, you know, bicuspid aortic valve is the commonest congenital heart disease. One percent of the population has bicuspid valve, and it wears and tears faster, so it's not uncommon for us to see bicuspid aortic stenosis or regurgitation. And at least half of the patients that the surgeons are treating today, uh, you know, for aortic valve surgery, have bicuspid aortic valve. So it's quite frequent, in fact. Uh, and uh, in the TAVI population that we are treating, what would we uh, keep as a, a metrics? Five, ten percent more than that? Or? I, I think you're right, because we are selectively treating patients with bicuspid aortic valve. And the number of that, for example, in the last uh, analysis that we did in the TVT registry was mm -hmm. about six to seven percent. So, you know, only 7% of the entire TAVR population was patients who had bicuspid aortic valve. Yeah. So it's not uh, a rare finding, uh, a rare uh, issue that we have to tackle uh, every day. So uh, there is bicuspid and bicuspid, different phenotypes, different uh, calcification pattern. And uh, we all have the feeling that we should select a bit this patient, meaning that there are some patients that we should not treat with TAVI. Uh, could you uh, guide us a little bit uh, into who should not be treated by TAVI, according to your experience? Yes, so, you know, while the surgeons classify bicuspid aortic disease as 0, 1, and 2, mm -hmm. I think from an interventional cardiologist's perspective, what is important or what is critically important is the amount of calcification mm -hmm. of the aortic valve. So, in an analysis that we did, um, you know, looking at more than a thousand CT scans, what we found was that when you have heavy calcium and calcified raffae, a combination of these two things, that's when you have the worst outcomes. When you have none of these two factors, that's when you have the best outcomes in terms of death, paravalvular AI, and aortic root injury. So that is clear. And um, uh, I had the privilege to present uh, at Euro PCR 2023, the Bivolet X registry. Uh, so uh, it was a prospective regist registry that enrolled 149 patients. Uh, treated with the same platform, it was the Evolute Pro at that time. And what we observed was a very good valve performance, excellent hemodynamics at one year. Uh, but there was uh, a slightly higher stroke rate as compared to, we, to what we see in tricuspid valves. And this certainly has something to do with the uh, uh, calcification pattern, just as you, you described. Uh, do you think that this could be a reason for a systematic uh, utilization of cerebral protection devices in these patients? Uh I think that because a lot of these patients are young and some of them might have heavily calcified valves, I think it's a reasonable thing to go ahead and use uh, an embolic protection device while we are actually doing TAVR. Now, the randomized clinical trial didn't suggest that, but the number of bicuspid patients was very small. Yeah. So till we have a randomized clinical trial of embolic protection device in bicuspid patients, I would make the argument it's reasonable to do so. Oh, so that's a very good point. Uh, let's talk about uh, later about the randomized uh, trial potential and interest of a randomized trial. But uh, do you have uh, new data coming from the TVT registry to share with us? So, uh, Didier, what we did was, uh, after we did the initial analysis from the TVT registry in mm -hmm. 2019, in 2021, 22, we actually looked at the patients who were low risk for surgery. Mm. So. These are patients who are relatively younger, where the STS score was lower, and they were not necessarily bad candidates. They were actually reasonably good candidates for surgery, but they underwent TAVR procedure, almost 3,000 patients. And once again, what we found was that in hospital and 30-day death rates of around 1% in this patient population, stroke rates which were very similar to the tricuspid aortic stenosis, about 1.5%, 1, 1 and also one-year survival, was actually pretty good, you know, uh, almost uh, f about 4.4% 4, 4 one-year survival in these patients who were low-risk patients. So we confirmed 
that even in low risk mm. patients, the outcomes were similar between bicuspid and tricuspid. And I say that with the caveat mm. that of course, these are not all bicuspid patients. This must have been where the heart teams locally must have decided. This is looking at the CT, looking at the patient characteristics, that this is a reasonable case for them to do a TAVR procedure. Oh, it's clear, it's uh, crucial to properly select uh, the, the appropriate patient because Clearly, if you want to match the outcomes that you just described, it's about selecting the best, uh, the best candidates. So this uh, brings the discussion towards the potential need for a randomized trial. Uh, the first question that I would like to ask you is, do you think that a randomized trial is needed? And second, uh, would you still select the patient or move for a kind of all-commerce uh, uh, cohort? Yes. So I think we need a randomized clinical trials. Mm -hmm. You know, for a disease that is so common, uh, I, I think that we need to know the long-term outcomes and we need to have more systematic and granular analyses adjudic adjudicated by central committees and echo findings that are assessed by core labs so that we can really properly guide our patients. So I am all for doing a randomized clinical trial. I think that it should be all comer in terms of risk. Yeah. But I think in terms uh, clinical risk, but I think in terms of anatomical risk, there needs to be guardrails, as I would call them. So, yeah. of course, there are some patients who would be extremely high risk. Those patients should not be randomized. And I think this would be, again, a heart team decision, you know, where everybody sits down, takes a look and says, this is good for both. And then let's go ahead and randomize these patients. And I would also make the argument that we need to capture patients that are not randomized and also follow them long term. In registries, parallel in, in, registries. In parallel registries so that we can actually understand the outcomes of the entire bicuspid population as a whole. So that's excellent. So as I expected, this was a very uh, fun discussion. It's always uh, interesting and I always learn a lot when I discuss with you. Uh, so we can clearly see that bicuspid is, is a quite frequent disease, as you just mentioned. We have very uh, good data coming from the Bivolit X in a higher risk population, uh, Bivolit X registry, as well as a TVT registry for a low risk population. And clearly, there is a need for a randomized trial. We are in, a, in agreement uh, for that. Uh, so let's wait. The future is uh, really interesting, stimulating. So thank you again, uh, Raj. Pleasure.